India is trying to build what could be the world's largest facial recognition system. New Delhi says the system could help fight crime and find missing children. The technology has already been launched in a few Indian airports. Police in New Delhi say they had identified nearly 3,000 missing children during a trial period last year. But not everyone's convinced. Internet freedom advocates say there's little information about where and what the system will be used for, how data will be stored. The use of facial recognition software is common in places like China, but one British study has revealed the technology to be highly inaccurate. Well, let's get more on this. We're joined now by Pranesh Prakash from Bengaluru in India. He's a fellow at the Centre for Internet and Society. He's talking to us in a personal capacity today. Very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. So can the Indian government deploy the system even though there is little information on where it will, where it will be used, what the data will be used for, and um, how storage, data storage, will be regulated? Given the lack of a law to actually govern this, given that there is a lack of a privacy law in India, and there is no law that actually uh, governs uh, the software that is being used, uh, the facial recognition software, uh, to say in what kinds of cases it may be used, what kinds of databases it may pull from, and so on, nothing authorizing the setting up of such a project. It's highly questionable, in my opinion, uh, whether it would be legal uh, if the government goes ahead with this. So could we see this come in front of the Supreme Court, which, you know, in a landmark ruling in 2017 on the National Biometric Identity Card program, ADAD, said that individual privacy is a fundamental right amid concerns over data breaches and the card's, you know, mandated use for services. Could, so could we see the Supreme Court check the rollout of facial recognition technology? Absolutely. So right now, it is at a stage where the government has asked, has put out a public tender uh, asking for software vendors to uh, get back to it. And, and so far, it hasn't had much success. Um, and, but on the other hand, if it does actually go ahead with this uh, project, and given the lack of uh, accountability mechanisms, given the lack of any checks and balances, and given how India's intelligence agencies uh, aren't even answerable to parliament uh, and to the people. They don't operate in, under any law. It's, it's very highly likely that it will be challenged in court. And indeed, in 2017, in a different uh, challenge in the Supreme Court, uh, the Delhi police uh, said that only their, the accuracy of the facial recognition system right. that they were using was only 1%. And it often mistook little girl children for boys and, and so on and so forth. I mean, if with an accuracy rate of 1%, why is the government wanting to roll out such technology? I mean, the Indian police say it's needed to bolster. We know what is an incredibly severely under police country. But is this the way to do it? So I don't think it's fundamentally a question of, of uh, usage of technology. Uh, there are good uses for technology. However, that uh, any kind of uses, especially those that may infringe upon civil liberties, the way uh, facial recognition uh, quite certainly may, need to be highly regulated. In fact, in San Francisco, uh, usage of facial recognition by the police departments actually been banned. And so uh, in in country like India, where we have an absence of, of privacy laws without very strict regulation. Uh, it's, it's just foolish for the government to, to go ahead with this kind of a project because the, the, uh, the capacity for abuse is superbly high. And we have multiple cases. In fact, even two weeks ago in the Bombay High Court, there was a case about uh, unlawful uh, phone interception by the police and in which uh, the, the court found that the government had, in fact, uh, unlawfully intercepted. And so the, the amount of uh, unlawful illegal surveillance in India is known to be high. And in this kind of a situation, uh, to bring in even more technology without providing any safeguards whatsoever for citizens or indeed uh, any limitations on how the police or other agencies of the government may uh, use this, on what kinds of databases they may get information from uh, for the facial recognition. None of that's actually put out there in the tender and no safeguards are provided. And indeed, we need a law and the absence of a privacy right. law to, to go ahead with this is, is, uh, will just create a police state, in my opinion.
Mr. Prakash, it is great to get your expertise on this. We really appreciate your time. That is Pranesh Prakash, live in Bengaluru. Thank you.